Jason McCrossan. FM in on Sittingbourne. FM in Sittingbourne and online around the world. The world. This is 106.9 SFM. My guest tonight came to prominence about 10 years ago when his eldest son, Lewis, made his debut driving for the Formula One team McLaren in 2007. Anthony Hamilton nurtured and drove the young Lewis's career before stepping aside in 2010. Anthony Hamilton has diversified into football by creating a device that helps youngsters hone their football skills indoors without smashing and cracking the furniture. It's called Kick Tricks. And Anthony joins me this evening. Hello, Anthony. Hi, how are you? I'm very good, thank you very much. And we're going to talk about this Kick Tricks device in a moment. But firstly, to be honest, I just wanted to talk a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Because your family came from Granada in the 1950s. And I suppose, I mean, when we think about motorsport, right, we think of fast cars, we think of big houses, luxury yachts and fast jets. A lifestyle totally alien to yourself when you were growing up. Yes, yeah, my, my father and my mother came over early 50s. Uh, typically, you know, what happened back then was, you know, the man would come over and get a job on, the, you know, get a job on the uh, railway and then once he settled, he would then bring his wife over and that's typically what happened to my family. And we settled in a, a little one-bedroom somewhere up in Acton and uh, eventually ended up moving to uh, West Ealing and um, that's kind of where I lived out most of my childhood. Were you interested in sport as a child? No, not really, to be honest. Um, you know, we were, you know, we were like a typical poor black family living in West London. And, um, you know, the only sport that we ever had was playing out in the street, you know, on our bikes and, uh, you know, a little bit of football. Okay. But, um, you know, even once I was a teenager and found work, I still, you know, my life wasn't such that I could, you know, that I had the wherewithal to to go and play sports, because that wasn't the sort of thing that happened in the, cent you know, the centre of West London. When we look at Lewis and all his successes, which came at an early age, you are seen as the main driving force for this. I mean, when did you notice that Lewis was interested in sport? Well, you know, it's really very strange. You know, when I think back, you know, Lewis was four, nearly coming on five years of age. And uh, like most young boys, uh, and, and a lot of girls nowadays, was infatuated with, uh, you know, remote control cars. And his first real experience, I suppose, of being in control of a, of a car was when we, we joined the remote control car club. He was, he was age five at the time. And he would uh, drive these one twelfth scale petrol cars around uh, a circuit. And his hand-to-eye coordination was such that being one of only two kids in the club, the rest of them were, were adults, probably my age now, and, you know, he came second in the first year. And I just thought, you know, for a, for a five-year-old, that was phenomenal ability. And so we did that for another couple of years, and after that, I thought, well, you know, let's, let's go and try him in, you know, sitting in something rather than remote controlling something. And the first time he sat in the go-kart, well, the guy who was testing him said to me, you need to get him racing. He obviously noticed it from the very beginning. How much of this was led by Lewis and how much was led by yourself? And I guess, I'm just thinking back to your parents, actually, you must, who must have had a lot of drive and a desire for a better life because they moved from one country to another, which is a big move. I mean, did that the desire for something better rub off on you? I, I mean, the thing is, you know, when my father um, was in Grenada, when he, he grew up in Grenada, he was apparently, so I'm told by him and uh, all the neighbours, he was a, a motorbike demon. Ah. <laughs> so he, he would ride up and down the, 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 the mountain roads, you know, frightening everybody to death because he was the fastest thing on two wheels. When I was a kid, I also loved cars, you know. I used to uh, drive, um, you know, when I was 17, for sure, I used to drive my car faster than the speed limit would allow. I was fortunate that I never got caught when I was youngster, and I wouldn't uh, encourage it now at all. But, uh, you know, obviously speed kind of lay within the family somewhere. 
Then it came to Lewis and his remote control car and his go-karting. And in the early days, it was all driven by Lewis. It was, you know, you know, I'd say, Lewis, what would you like to be when you grow up? The answer was always, Dad, I want to be a racing driver. That's his response from since the age he was, you know, from, from the age of five. But as things became more serious, you know, because what, what Lewis displayed was exceptional talent, you know, between the ages of seven through to uh, 13, 14, for argument's sake, um, where he'd won, you know, in every year, he'd won a British karting championship, and in, in one of those years, won a European karting championship. And so what started out as being driven by Lewis, that I'd love to be a racing driver, and this is what, what I want to do, because it's great fun. Well, it was also great fun for the family. For me, it became... Um, you know, I became driven to make sure that he maximised on that opportunity and that talent because too often nowadays kids fail to reach, you know, the final goal because they don't have the correct support, whether it's managerial, family or friendly. Um, they don't seem to have the correct support to keep them on the, on the straight and narrow. And, you know, when you look at Lewis, he won his first Formula One World Championship at the age of 23, and throughout all that time, up until the age of 23, he stayed listening to his dad, which is exceptional because most kids, you know, fire their parents at the age of 15. Thinking back to when Lewis was young and he was just starting out in karting, let's just see, as a parent, and we all want what's best for our kids, but did it ever even enter your head where life would eventually lead to? I suppose what I'm asking is, what was the best that you hoped would happen from all of this? Whether it be the little cars he used to drive or the go-karting. And also, I suppose, how old would you have been back then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. I mean, I, um, so I would have been about 34, coming on 35 at the time Lewis was you know, um, his, in, into his first or, or second year of, of uh, karting. And, uh, you know, I, I, I worked on the railway, I had an ordinary job, you know, I was working in computing on the railway. And the problem with my job, at my life at the time was, you know, typical average family struggling to pay the mortgage, but more often than not struggling to find the, the money to put Lewis through motor racing. And so I started to take up a few other jobs. Um, I took up a job picking up signboards for an estate agent. I started washing dishes in the evening. You know, so I, I did everything I could to actually make the money because I promised Lewis that I would support him in, in his dream of being a, a, a kart driver. At that particular time, we had no idea or ambitions of Formula One. We were just enjoying the family moment of going karting and Lewis winning. It came to a point when, and I'd been in my job about 15 years by this time, and it came to a point where my boss, you know, I said to my boss once, um, uh, my son's leading this karting, British karting championship and uh, we've got to go to Scotland next week. Can I have some time off? And he said, no, sorry, you can't have the time off. And I was thinking, well, what do I do? I've been in this job 15 years. Do I leave? Or, you know, what, 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 what do I do? Anyway, it transpires that I requested redundancy because the job wouldn't allow me to support Lewis in his karting. Um... Fortunately, what happened, you know, you know a few months later, uh, I, I, I managed to get my redundancy. And the week after redundancy, the company, British Rail, called me back up and said, we, ne we hear you're now um, unemployed, but would you like to come back as a consultant? And basically it allowed me to write my own check, write my own timetable, mm -hmm. and allowed me to actually go, you know, to manage Lewis's karting, which then became European. Um, so, so the right things happened, and and once that happened, it became serious. You know, up up to the you know to the point where it was just us going motor racing at weekends and having family fun. Because of all of the changes in work and taking on a consultancy, I said to Lewis, "Look, you know, if you're serious about this, then I'm going to run it seriously." And so I pushed him as much as I felt I needed to for him not to fall off. The, you know, the direction he, he chose to go. 
You had what I suppose many people would call a traditional working class or middle class background upbringing. I mean, you worked for the railways, you then moved up to work for a contractor, having your own business. When you look back at all those days and all those people that you used to work with, especially on the railways, do you just think... <laughs> All those times you made things hard for me or were difficult or were horrible or said stuff to me. Ha, ha, ha. You're not so cocky now. Um, you know, I, sadly not, no. Oh, I okay. mean, I, you know, I had great a great time on the railway back then. It, you know, it, uh, it gave me a job, looked after me and, and put me on the path towards you know, building what ended up, you know, my own computer business once I became a consultant. And um, so I, I can only say positive things about the railway. I've still got some very, very good friends, by the way, who, who, all, who work on the railway, who are still, you know, working in the department where I used to work. And, uh, you know, and I, I see them occasionally. Uh, they're my long-term and true friends. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so no, unfortunately, there isn't anybody I look back on and think, hey, you missed out. Um, there are a few spon people that uh, I did ask for sponsorship back then, you know, it was like, you know, went with a begging bowl and yeah. said, look, guys, please, can you help me? I, I can't afford to run my son in go-karting. And uh, they would tell me, I said, well, you know, it's just, it's just fun fair stuff, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, you know. And I bet they wouldn't mind knocking on your door today. <laughs> uh, for sure. They, I mean, they're all still friends of mine, those guys that I used to knock on their door. And yes, they think back and think, oh, if only... Okay, listen, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we are going to talk about this new device that you've developed. It's called Kick Tricks, and it's to help youngsters hone their football skills indoors. It is Monday Night's Monday Matters. When we return, back with Anthony Hamilton. Across Sittingbourne and everywhere in between. Check out the 106.9 SFM website at www.sfmradio.com. On FM in Sittingbourne and online around the world, this is 106.9 SFM. We take a break, we'll see you soon. Jason McCrossan. FM in on Sittingbourne. FM in Sittingbourne and online around the world. The world. This is 106.9 SFM. Welcome back. It is Monday Night's Monday Matters. I'm speaking to Anthony Hamilton, who is on the line, otherwise known or kind of better known through through the career of his son, Lewis, who just so happened to win the Grand Prix over the weekend, which was good news. But we're not going to talk about that for the moment, Anthony. What we're going to talk about is this football device that you've designed, and it's to help youngsters hone their football skills. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically what I... So I came up with a, pro a product. I mean, once... I, I've been trying to rack my brain as to how do you take somebody, let's say like Lewis, you know, from a council house and make them a, a, a budding superstar? And, um, you know, I, I'm quite passionate about football and I've been looking at football and thinking, you know, what, what is it about our English team and our English players that we can't win the World Cup? And I did like a bit of a survey about the teams that have won the Cup and everything else. And it turns out that most of the people that win, you know, have longer hours during the day for playing. Um, and so I thought, well, let's design something that allows our kids to play longer, even though the nights are dark or it's raining outside. And I came up with this concept of a base unit um, that you fill with water or fill with sand and a tether that comes off it with a ball connected on the end. Um, we've built some electronics into it, and electronics is all about every time you kick the ball, it counts your keepy uppies. Um, it has various programs on the on the electronics, which uh, are designed to keep the individual um, focused and interested. Um, there's also a league that goes with it, an application uh, that goes with it, and and the league that we have online. And so the, the whole concept really is, you know. While young people, while youngsters, you know, it's all, it's easy to kick a ball, run after a ball and kick it. It's what are your 
core skills, you know, what are your macro skills like when you've got the ball at your feet? And I found that doing some trials with some youngsters who play for some of the, you know, the, the junior Premier League teams, um, couldn't actually control the ball in one spot. So, in, in order to improve their skills, I came up with this device, this keep the device called Kick Tricks, and what it's proved so far is that 15 to 20 minutes of playing this machine on a daily basis over a three-month period improves your fitness, your ball control, um, your, your leg muscles, and your focus. And it, it, and it also gives you a greater confidence when playing with a football. What was the moment? I mean, what was the occasion when the light bulb went off in your head and this idea popped into your mind? I mean, had you been watching football? Was it at someone's house? Or I mean, were you just lounging around in the bath when it hit you? Well, I mean, to be honest, the, the original idea, um, it, it came from two places. The first thing was, my first idea was, you know, obviously, I, I, you know, I, I've got great experience in motorsport and I was trying to design something that would allow uh, race, you know, kart drivers, you know, kart racing drivers and motor racing drivers to warm up before they got in the car. Uh-huh. And so I started off by trying to design a driver training aid of some sort. It then manifested itself into, well, actually, this is more of a football aid than a driver aid. I mean, drivers can use it because it requires motor, you know, motor skills, if you want, to use it. But then I thought, you know, then I was around a, a friend's house one day and she's got three young lads who all play football for, for, for good clubs. And I, I gave them a ball and said, here, I'll do some keepy uppies. And not one of them could do five keepy uppies in one spot. So that convinced me, actually, I need to build something that trains these young lads who can all score goals and who can all run up and down pitches, but who can't control the ball in one spot. I thought I'd design something to aid their training. And that's how Kick Tricks came about. And what's been the response to Kick Tricks? Yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've had it tested by a lot of young players. Um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, since its launch, we've sold to New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, Ireland, Spain, many places in Europe. So at the moment, the sales are going well. We've, we've taken up some distributions um, in the Far East because there are a couple of people who are really keen to distribute it. Um, at the moment, we're selling it. Uh, the, the, the main Kittrix unit is sold online at uh, the Kittrix.com website. We've also got a, a junior version that is for babies, um, and that's the version we're hoping to have in the shops at some stage in the next month or two. So it must be quite a good feeling, to be fair, to think of an idea, get it designed, get it manufactured, get it out there for people to try and buy it, I mean, when you think about how most ideas never get much further than the initial idea stage, never mind manufacturing and out there to um, the public. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm really grateful. You know, it's always, you know, it's been, you know, like a lot of people. I mean, I've I've always had a dream to design something, build something and see it, see it actually, you know, in use. And, you know, my, my view on it is that, you know, I know what made Lewis great. And that was hard work and dedication. Um... I'm a great believer that, you know, if you provide someone with the tools to be great and as they're honest with themselves, then they will be great. And what I, what I hope happens with Kick Tricks is that, you know, if one youngster says to themselves, well, actually, you know, I'm not very good at the moment, but if I use Kick Tricks and do what I'm supposed to do, as in practice with it every day, I could become a left foot player or a right foot player and my confidence will grow. I could be a successful, not necessarily football player but I could be a successful human being because it's a training tool that aids your development and your development is you know all down to you at the end of the day you know if you apply yourself you can be a champion Um, and if Lewis and I didn't have that belief when he was younger then things would have been drastically different you'd probably still be doing the old office 95 consultancy work I'd still be running my computer company and Lewis you know, who knows what job he would have been doing, but the world would have lost out on somebody like Lewis Hamilton. It is Monday night's Monday Matters. Very good evening to you. We are going to take another break, one more break, and then when we return, we're going to talk about, well, we've got to talk about it, haven't we? The Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton won the Grand Prix over the weekend. Still keeps him in the title race, although I think there's still only 37 points up for grabs, so it is very difficult. And when we come back, let's talk a little bit about 
the Grand Prix from a father's perspective. Across Sittingbourne and everywhere in between. Check out the 106.9 SFM website at www.sfmradio.com. On FM in Sittingbourne and online around the world, this is 106.9 SFM. Passenger and the title track from that, Young as the Morning, Old as the Sea. It is Monday nights, Monday matters here on 106.9 SFM. I've got Anthony Hamilton on the line with me at the moment. Very nice of you to hang on, Anthony. And it was the Grand Prix over the weekend in Texas over in America. Lewis won again in style. I mean, does your heart still beat a little bit faster when Lewis is racing? Yes. Um, <laughs> to be quite honest, it's the same feeling that I had when he first took his when he took his first kart race at the age of eight. The feeling doesn't change. You know, ultimately, it's your it's your family, it's your son that's out there, and. It doesn't matter whether they're 8 or 31, you always want the best for them. You want them to win, you want them to achieve, to be happy with their results. And, um, you know, so, that, you know, I, I'm always always anxious for him. Um, I'm always anxious just, you know, because I, I want the best for him. Now, you have the benefit of an insider's view on the relationship Lewis has with others. And I guess I'm thinking mainly of his, who else, teammate Nico Rosberg. And the stuff in the press about the relationship and how they always in competition, and we understand that, but they're painted as rivals both on and off the circuit, almost as though they really hate each other, if you were to believe the press. Should we pay any attention to this media hyperboil? I mean, you know, you're right. It, it is what happens in sport. I mean, you know, the rivalries are... They're not personal. They're competition, you know. Um, uh, you know, every day... There are people who go out to dinner with each other, go out to lunch with each other, then they're back at work tomorrow, and they're competing for the next job. And it's the, it's the same with Lewis and Nico. They've known each other since they were 13. They've competed against each other since they were 13. Some, some you win, some you lose, but at the end of the day, they always shook hands and went for a meal. And it, nothing has really changed. Well, some of the articles that I was reading over the weekend, you would think that they did actually hate each other. No, you know, for me, everything is in the eyes and the body language. And when you see those two, two guy, young guys, you know, when one wins and the other loses, one's happy, the other's not so happy, and, but, you know, and, and, but, and they're not happy with each other. That's because, you know, you don't want to lose to your friend, do you? <laughs> you know, you want to beat your friend or you want to beat your teammate. Um, so it's a natural reaction to actually not be happy when something like, ha that, like that happens because it'd be really unusual for you to have just come second to the guy you want to beat and be all, oh, hey, well done, my friend. <laughs> but um, typically what happens is, you know, once the red mist has settled, there's a glass of champagne and chit-chat and friendship is restored. Uh, and, you know, so there's, there's nothing, you know, nothing untoward going on between those two guys. You know, they, they go out, they go out with each other, they race against each other, they have fallouts with each other. How often do you actually go out and watch Lewis race in the flesh these days? Uh, I don't go very often anymore because um, I've chosen, you know, the, the last sort of year to 18 months, I've dedicated my time to des my design company, my design products, because, you know, I, I, I'm, very, I, I, I'm very blessed, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful and very blessed that I've been given the opportunity to do something fantastic um, with Lewis and, and in motorsport. And what I want to try and do is just maximize the blessing that I've been given and try to see if I can design something or help someone else uh, believe in themselves to become great. You know, knowing the, the, the detail of where we came from and, and my childhood, I, be, you know, I believe that if I've had such a tough upbringing, I'm sure I can help one other person to be great. And, and that's my goal in life. And when you watch a race, I mean, do you still catch yourself texting him, say, uh, giving him advice or trying to give him advice, and then you just stop mid-text and think, hold on a second, I'm his dad, not his manager anymore. Mm, I'll just change that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, 
in all intent, really intents and purposes, I've never really been Lewis's manager. Um, you know, I've managed the business aspect for him, but never managed him. I've always been his father. And my advice to him has always been fatherly advice rather than managerial advice. Um, and even nowadays, although I'm, I'm not, in quotes, managing him, I'm still his father. And of all the people in the world, I'm the one that's real. I will always be truthful, always be real with him, and always tell him even things he doesn't like to hear. But that's what us parents are supposed to do. That's what us, you know, and and that's what made Lewis great. That you know, if I wasn't the person I was, then I doubt very much that he would have stood the test up, you know, to the point where he got to Formula One. <laughs> okay, so listen, Anthony. When you do, right? When you do have to tell Lewis Hamilton something he may not want to hear, how does the man take it? How does Lewis take criticism? Um, yeah, positively. <laughs> really? Just yeah, take, oh, so, positively. Get you know, lost. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, no. He's he's always, um, you know, he's. I mean, you know, he, he's mature enough to to understand that actually, you know, when I say, you know, if I say something that he doesn't doesn't quite like he will agree with it he fully understands it uh, it might not be you know he might not take it on board but he'll put it in his back pocket and remember actually my dad always tells me like it is well listen thank you very much indeed it's been fascinating talking to you this evening and good luck with this new game kick tricks it's a device it's out there you can look online and it's about helping youngsters hone their football skills indoors. Anthony Hamilton, thank you very much for your time this evening. This is 106.9 SFM.